உங்களுக்கு எல்லாருக்கும் வணக்கம் எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் தமிழ் தெரியும் அது ஹேபிட் ஆகி போச்சா அப்போது வந்து தமிழில் பேசுகிறேன் இப்போ முடியாது அதுக்கு தான் நான் இங்கிலீஷில் பேசுகிறேன் பை சேஞ்சிங் த செக்குலர் டெமோக்ராட்டிக் கேரக்டர் ஆஃப் த இந்தியன் ரிப்பப்ளிக் இன் டு வாட் இஸ் தி ஆர்எஸ்எஸ் விஷன் ஆஃப் ஏ ஃபேஷிஸ்டிக் இந்துத்வ ராஷ்ட்ரம் எயிட் டைம்ஸ் இன் த லாஸ்ட் நைன் டேஸ் தி ப்ரைசஸ் ஆஃப் பெட்ரோலியம் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் ஹவ் பின் இன்க்ரீஸ் the refusal for the rss and the modi government to accept india's diversity they do not recognize that there are different la- nationalities in india which are based on different languages that is why their slogan hindu hindi hindustan the rustalin and the dmk government in tamil nadu will have to take a major role in bringing together all the non bjp chief ministers of all these states in order to defend federalism in our indian constitution anybody who speaks against the modi government is an enemy of india and therefore arrested under uapa or under sedition etc this is the attack on democratic rights going on by this government who will leave this alternative to mr modi who is the alternative leader you have the same question came in 2004 3 and 4 when they said who is the alternative to mr vajpayee in 2003 4 tell me honestly did any one of you think that dr manmohan singh will be india's prime minister that is indian democracy don't worry about who is the leader after the election the leader will come modi will go there is no other answer for relief for the people if modi government cannot change policies in people's interest then we must all together ensure that this modi government is defeated and removed from power at the center so that the people's welfare and the country's interest can be protected ungalukku ellarkum vanakkam enak konjam konjam tamil theriyum paasa mudiyadhu ungalukku ungalukku ellarkum theriyum indha election campaign la vandha idhu dhaan solna na adhe habit aayi pocha appo vandhi tamil la pesuren ippa mudiyadhu adhe dhaan english la pesuren complete translate pannuva so all the members of the uh, Bullet Bureau of the CPIM, Governor J. Ramakrishnan, Governor M.A. Baby, the State Secretary, Governor K. Balakrishnan, other members of the Central Committee of the party, the leaders of the State uh, CPIM, the Secretary of the Tamil Nadu CPI, and my dear comrades and friends. It's always a pleasure to come to Madurai. I've always said that religious people always come to Madurai to take the blessings of madurum madurum madurai meenakshi amal but revolutionaries will always come to madurai also part of their teerth yatra like the religious people do the revolutionaries come because madurai has been a center of very vigorous people's movements through the struggle for independence it's been a center of inspiration for the communist movement you had heroic martyrs like mari banavadu bakkam balu subbaya this is the place for janaki ammal this is the place from which come p ram murthy come shankaraya all of them have advanced the cause of the communist and the communist movement therefore for a communist and a revolutionary coming to madurai is always coming back to the land where you say red salute and you say that revolution will come and this red flag will liberate india and the people of india and that is the sentiment with which we all return to madurai that is why but this meeting in madurai is happening on the occasion of our 23rd state conference of the cpim which is in run up to our 23rd party congress which we are having the first week of april at kannur in kerala these conferences are taking place all over the country and the party congress comes at the background of very grave situation in our country on the one hand the 75 years of india's independence is sought to be celebrated by changing the character of the indian republic by changing the secular democratic character of the indian republic into what is the rss vision of a fascistic hindutva rashtra and that is the effort that is going on which is the destruction of the secular democratic republic and the indian constitution along with this destruction of the secular democratic indian republic and the constitution this is accompanied by 
the most ferocious attacks on the livelihood of the people with growing unemployment, growing poverty, growing hunger and now with the runaway inflation and rising prices. Eight times in the last nine days, the prices of petroleum products have been increased. And this increase is happening when already the prices of all essential commodities are on the rise. That is, people's lives are being ruined. But their agenda is the destruction of this secular democratic constitution, this secular democratic India, and at the same time impose unbearable burdens on the people. This cannot be accepted. That is the conclusion that the CPM conferences are coming to. And if this cannot be accepted, there is only one answer. The answer is the power of the people's movements and people's struggles to ensure that either these policies are changed or this government must go. There is no other answer for relief for the people. If Modi government cannot change policies in people's interest, then we must all together ensure that this Modi government is defeated and removed from power at the center so that the people's welfare and the country's interest can be protected. That is why today the country requires that we need to isolate and defeat the BJP, keep them away from power if, if we want, keep them away from government, if we want to protect our national assets, if we want to protect our public sector, if we want to protect reservations in the country, if we have to protect the interests of the working people, our farmers, our annadatas, our, work, our workers our, and our rights of our trade unions, if we want a better education for our children, better health and survival for our people, then it is essential that these policies have to change. And if these policies have to change, this Modi government will have to go. That is why the primary task today is to isolate and defeat this RSS-led BJP government's agenda. And that is the primary objective that the CPI seeks itself for the sake of saving our country today, India, so that we can change India for the better tomorrow. That is why today, it's not only for these reasons, but also the refusal for the RSS and the Modi government to accept India's diversity. They do not recognize that there are different la nationalities in India which are based on different languages. They do not give equality <coughs> and respect for all the Indian languages and we try to impose Hindi as they are trying to do. They do not accept the diversity of Indian culture. They would want to accept, uh, they, were, they would want to force or force, impose only the culture of the dominant group as they, they call it, of that of the Hindi speaking areas. That is why their slogan is Hindu, Hindi, Hindustan. That is to the exclusion of Tamil language, Telugu language, Malayalam language, Marathi language, Odisha language and all our nationalities. This is something that is un not only unacceptable, but if this is implemented, the unity and in integrity of India cannot remain. Therefore, the struggle today for equality of all linguistic nationalities in our country is a struggle that is integral to the struggle to save India integral to the struggle to oust this Modi government so that we can protect and save India and strengthen its future in order to create a better India. That is why we, the CPIM, and our left parties and ally the CPI, the, our MPs in the parliament, you just heard Comrade Su Venkateshan, they raise, uh, raise these issues and articulate them in the interest, not only of Tamil Nadu, but in the interest of India in the parliament. But it is not only the left. We will have to unite all the secular democratic forces in our country who believe today in federalism, who believe in the equality of the rights of the states, who believe that India is a union of states and without the states there is no Indian union and who will therefore fight for a more democratic center-state relations in our country and this is a project that was undertaken when the late 
Kalangar Karunanidhi was alive when we had joint opposition meetings of non-Congress chief ministers in those days, like that today. Thiru Stalin and the DMK government in Tamil Nadu will have to take a major role in bringing together all the non-BJP chief ministers of all these states in order to defend federalism in our Indian constitution, in order to defend the constitution and the CPM and the left parties are pledged to give complete support to them in this effort to bring together all non-BJP forces to protect India's diversity, to protect the rights of, of India's languages, cultures, traditions on an equal footing. This is also necessary, not only for the protection of federalism and the rights of the states and to have democratic center-state relations in the country, but the coming together of all non-BJP secular forces is today important also to save the other fundamental pillars of our constitution. Most important amongst them is the question of social justice. Today in Tamil Nadu, you have once had very till recently, 52% of industry in Tamil Nadu was under the public sector. If you had the public sector, you had reservations. Today with this large-scale privatization, the entire concept of reservations is being given the go-by because in private industry there is no compulsory reservation. We have been demanding, the CPM and the left parties, that introduce reservations in the private sector. All the other left and out the secular democratic forces must be brought together. If the slogan of social justice, if the slogan of social justice so important in Tamil Nadu politics for decades now, from the times of Periyar, the question of social justice has been a big people's movement in Tamil Nadu. If that has to be realized today, then all the secular democratic forces will have to come together, not only to defend our, defend our constitution, but to stop and reverse this privatization and introduce reservations in the private sector. These are big battles. These are big battles which have to be won against a political force which is showing no norms of decency to democratic procedures which is imposing authoritarian attacks on all individuals, their democratic rights and civil liberties. Anybody who speaks against the Modi government is an enemy of India and therefore arrested under UAPA or under sedition, etc. This is the attack on democratic rights going on by this government. If we have today to safeguard social justice, safeguard reservations, it is necessary that this government has to go and for that the unity of all left secular democratic forces will have to be strengthened. There again, the role of the ruling DMK and the Chief Minister, Honorable Chief Minister Thiru Stalin becomes very important. Because as we have seen, it is Tamil Nadu has shown the way to the rest of India that if secular democratic forces come together, it is possible to defeat and defeat the BJP and its allies in a very big way, like you did in Tamil Nadu, defeating AIDMK and the BJP, and that is the future for India, and that we have to learn. There, the DMK, Thiru Stalin, and the left together will have to play an important role in the future. Some months ago, I had come to Tamil Nadu, to Chennai, met Thiru Stalin, and personally requested him to convene a meeting of all the non-BJP chief ministers because he is the one who is most acceptable for all non-BJP chief ministers as a figure who can bring together all these forces so that we can discuss the issues of federalism, the issues of social justice and to take the necessary actions for the future. Once again, through all of you, today I reiterate that request to Thiru Stalin that he should take the initiative and convene this meeting of non-BJP chief ministers so that this agenda can be pursued in the interest not only of Tamil Nadu but in the interest of the people of India, in the interest of social justice, in the interest of federalism, in the interest of the Indian constitution. At the same time, people's struggles will have to be strengthened against these policies and against these, sort of policies, against these economic policies and the burdens they are imposing 
and these sort of moves to destroy the Indian constitution. Yesterday and day before were two day strike by the tr central trade unions in the country. For more than one year, the Indian farmers, along with the agricultural labor, went on a historic strike. They are today, the youth of our country are demanding employment. The students of our country are up against the new education policy. Our women are in the midst of big struggles against, on attacks against them. And our Anganwadis, uh, Anganwadi workers, Asha workers, our scheme uh, workers, they are in a big struggle that is going on. People's struggles are rising. But the pressure of these people's struggles to change the policies will have to be combined with the pressure of the secular democratic political parties and forces to oust this government at the center. Both this will have to combine together and that is where the left and this red flag have an important role to play in combining both these aspects so that in the coming future we can save India and by the time of the next general election in 2024 we can oust this government and have a secular democratic a government of secular democratic forces that will save uh, that will protect the Indian constitution and strengthen it for the future. Finally, many people ask and particularly our media, they keep asking, but who will lead the alternative to Mr. Modi? Who will leave this alternative to Mr. Modi? Who is the alternative leader you have? The same question came in 2004, 3 and 4, when they said, who is the alternative to Mr. Vajpayee? Shining India. India shining, Mr. Vajpayee is leading India to a shining India. There is no opposition leader that can match Mr. Vajpayee. Therefore, you cannot defeat him. Same argument. What happened? Not only was the Vajpayee government defeated, but you had an alternate government under Dr. Manmohan Singh for 10 years. In 2003-04, tell me honestly, did any one of you think that Dr. Manmohan Singh will be India's Prime Minister? Anybody? But he became Prime Minister for 10 years. That is Indian democracy. Don't worry about who is the leader. After the election, the leader will come, Modi will go, a new government will come, a secular democratic government, and that is what has been India's experience. Always, the front that gives the government at the center is formed after the elections. Never has the front been formed before the election. Whether it is from defeat of Indira Gandhi in 1977, the Janata Party was formed after election. The United Front was formed after election that made Devagoda the Prime Minister. The NDA was formed after election that made Vajbai the Prime Minister in 1998. The UPA was formed after election in 2004 that made Dr. Manmohan Singh the Prime Minister. In 2024, the new formation will emerge after elections and that will elect from the new alternative government and that will be the departure of Mr. Modi and his polit politics and the RSS fascistic vision for India. That is why when people say what is the alternative, who is the national alternative, under whose leadership, these are all questions that will always be answered after elections. But what will happen before election? For the elections, in every state, all the left democratic and secular forces, all the secular forces will form the broadest possible front, will form the broadest possible understanding in order to defeat the communal forces, BJP and its allies. That is what happened in the front that was formed in Tamil Nadu during last elections that defeated the AIDMK and BJP. That is what will happen in all the other states where regional parties are today the leading anti-BJP parties. That is what will happen under the Samajwadi Party in UP, under the RJD in, in Bihar. And like this, in every state, the secular democratic forces will come to an understanding for the sake of saving India today, saving the interests of that particular state, and from that will emerge the national alternative. That is why in this, the role of the left and the DMK, 
particularly after the Tamil Nadu example, becomes very crucial and very important. And that is why the people of Tamil Nadu, particularly the people of Madurai, who have so wholeheartedly supported this understanding in coming together of the secular forces, secular democratic forces in Tamil Nadu, will have to contribute to strengthen this process in every state of India, so that post-election, general elections in 2024, and government, a secular democratic government can be formed at the center in order to save India, so that we can change India for the better. That is the historic responsibility before all of us. The CPIM is prepared to undertake this responsibility. It appeals to all our secular democratic allies, particularly the DMK and Thiru Stalin in Tamil Nadu, that let us all together come forward to save India, save Tamil Nadu, save the future of our people, stop this disastrous move towards destruction of India's social harmony and the building of this atmosphere of hate and violence between Hindus and the Muslims, which is their only agenda. We have to save India, save our society. Come, let us all come together and do that, do that job, which is what history has put that responsibility on us. And that is why, finally, I appeal to all of you, like you have in the past, like you have elected Comrade Venkateshan from here with a big margin, it is no longer election to one constituency. This is election to one country. This is election to one country and that country is India, which is my country, your country, everybody's country. We have to save that country and come together to save that country. That is my final appeal to all of you because that is the critical issue and we have to discharge the responsibility. The martyrs we remembered in the beginning, they discharge their responsibilities to give us freedom, to give us a better society. We have to discharge this responsibility to give our children, our future, a better India. And that is the challenge that you will all have to rise up to, with the confidence that you will rise up to this challenge with renewed vigor. Now, tell me, you can 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 t